Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight, we escape to a lush tropical island in the Caribbean, a paradise lost through the overpowering greed of a lovely woman and a dangerous man, as John and Gwen Bagney tell it in their exciting tale, Treasure Incorporated. <laughs> Well, are you coming? Huh? You're coming with me, aren't you? What for? I feel lucky. Got a feeling today is going to be the day. You said that for months. Why don't you leave me alone? She turned away and stared out the window at the jungle. Her face was a dissatisfied mask. She had on that old faded red beach dress... She wore it all the time now. And a sloppy pair of slippers. Her hair was pulled back off her neck with a piece of string, matted. And that wry, crisp figure she'd once had was going fast. He's up there. Sure, he's up there. He's always up there. I'm not going with you. All right, all right, stay. Stay, I don't care. You're no help to me anymore. And it won't do you any good to go either. Burn yourself up in this tropic sun and for what? Not while he's up there watching. Always watching. Who are you trying to kid? You know you'll sneak up there to see him the minute I'm gone? And he'll just kick you out again. Shut up. Look at yourself. Not even good enough for that beachcomber. Shut up. Shut up! That was Amanda. And I'd once thought her beautiful. And I'd thought this island was beautiful. A paradise. It seemed a million years ago when I first told Brewer about it. All right, Eddie. So you found a pretty island in the West Indies. Now what? Oh, you should see the island, Brewer. More than a square mile of tropical paradise, just as nature made it. Complete with native village and volcano. With enough money, I can get a 25-year lease. I've got it all figured out, Brewer. I could make it the best-paying resort in the Caribbean. Oh, I don't know, Eddie. There's so many resorts. What do you think, Amanda? It sounds intriguing. Why not, Paul? Believe me, it's sure fire with a gimmick like mine. Gimmick? Buried pirate treasure. How do you like that for tourist bait? <laughs> Eddie, I'm afraid you're dreaming. There's never any treasure in those places. Oh, I know that. That's what makes my gimmick so good. I'm going to bury the treasure myself. You are? Oh, sure, nothing too valuable. Just bait, you understand? You know, old Spanish coins, pieces of eight, daggers, bits of old sea chests. Can you get that sort of thing? Oh, I can get it. I know a guy who handles antiques. He can get it for me. Well, what do you think of it? Is that a gimmick or is that a gimmick? Eddie, you're a genius. <laughs> you like it, Brewer? Well, it sounds good, but I'd have to think about it. How about a drink? Okay. I'll fix this one. Uh, is scotch all right? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Think you'll go for it, Amanda? You'll go for it. You sure? He didn't sound so positive. Relax, Eddie. Don't worry so much. I'll get your island for you. Not for me, baby. For us. Eddie, take it easy. Remember, I still belong to Brewer. That's Amanda, the kind of a woman that always gets what she wants. She got me my island. I started planning the resort. Brewer was to supply the money, and I was to be the front man. It was a great plan. It couldn't miss. But I'd figured without Clive. I'll never forget the first time I saw Clive, the only white man on the island. He was bald, but he was young. He had a blonde beard. He was sitting in a tangle of jungle wearing nothing but a pair of white ducks ripped off at the knee and some binoculars slung about his neck with a length of vine. He was painting a seascape. 
Hi, uh, Gillespie's the name, Eddie Gillespie. I've been looking over the island. I know. I've been watching you. Terrific place. Say, uh, that volcano, any chance of it erupting? No, it's dead. Dead many years. Well, well, that's a relief. Say, I'm sure surprised to find a white man here. You are? Why? Well, so far away from civilization, nothing to do. And then what are you doing here? Me? <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this island on the map. Really? Yep. See that beat-up building down there by the beach? That once was a fine old plantation house. Yeah. Well, I'm going to turn it into a swanky hotel. Hotel? Sure, perfect spot for it with all those palm trees around it. And a golf course sweeping up over that hill. Of course, we'll have to clean all those dirty vines out. That dock is a pretty sick-looking thing, but the harbor's unnatural. What are you looking at through the binoculars? Devil's Cove. Why? What's going on down there? Nothing. I'm painting it. Through binoculars? Why don't you walk down there if you want to paint it? I prefer it this way. <laughs> That's the tropics for you. How lazy can you get? Mr. Gillespie, after you've been here a while, you'll learn to go with the island, not try to change it. Oh, you just wait and see. When I get through with this place, I'll make Nassau and Jamaica look like Rockaway Beach. Incidentally, those natives, they dress that way all the time in those faded old rags. You don't like it? Well, you got to keep it quaint, you know, as advertised. Got to give the tourists dollar value. We'll fix up the natives with bandanas and bright sashes, necklaces of coral, big earrings, baskets of fruit on their heads. Of course, they'll have to quit wearing those shoes. How about rings through their noses and a bone in their hair? <laughs> you know, I get the feeling you're not going to be very cooperative. It took me years to find a place that was remote from the world, and now that I have, I don't want it destroyed. Destroyed? Why, man, you're crazy. I'm going to do things for this island. I'll have this place humming in no time, and I'll... What's the matter? Don't you think I can do it? No, I don't, and I'll tell you why. Through the centuries, six flags have flown over this island, and each flag brought colonization and industry. Sugar, rum, the leaves of the bay tree, but not one of them could survive. Not one of them could hold back nature. The winds, the damp rot, the jungle, the vines that creep constantly day and night and snaring everything they touch. They couldn't do it, Mr. Gillespie, and neither can you or your hotel. No. You just watch me. I will. But if I thought you had one chance in a million to succeed, do you know what I'd do? What? I'd kill you. In the beginning, he stayed up on top of that hill of his like he owned the world. He ignored me completely until my tractors and bulldozers went to work. Then he began to come down more and more. I never heard him coming, and yet he always seemed to be around. And as I ran into trouble, wind, rain, rot, rats, I had to fight them all. It seemed to amuse him to watch me. Is your paradise fighting your back, Mr. Gillespie? Why don't you go up on your hill and stay there? What a beautiful swimming pool. A symbol of civilization. Do you expect it to last? Why, of course it'll last. Why don't you leave me alone? Be careful. It's bad to lose one's temper. The heat, you know. Yes, heat. Always heat. But I wouldn't give in to it. I drove myself. I drove everybody who worked for me. Come on, boys. We got two more hours of daylight. Get those vines out. They do grow, don't they? Huh? What do you want? Mm, I like to watch you fight them. It's such a useless task. They'll grow over you in the end, you know. Yeah? Well, I'll civilize this island. I'll show you. Go on and laugh all you want, but you'll see. When Eddie Gillespie starts something, he finishes it. Before the summer was over, we cleaned away all the vines and seeded the golf course. We dynamited the harbor, rebuilt the docks, working 18 hours a day. And then one afternoon, just before the hotel was finished, she arrived. I just knocked off for the day, and I was sprawling in my hammock in front of my hut. Hello, Eddie. Amanda. What are you doing here? You weren't supposed to come until the hotel was open. Aren't you glad to see me? Where's Brewer, and how did you get here? a launch. All the way from New York? <laughs> of course not. We've been anchored at Charlotte Amelia for a week. You didn't break with Brewer, did you? I told you not to break with him until after the hotel was finished. Don't get excited, Eddie. Brewer doesn't even know I'm here. He left this morning for Puerto Rico on a big deal. Oh. I haven't said you're glad to see me. I've forgotten. It's 
And so long, I'd forgotten how beautiful you are. Eddie. Uh, uh, look, uh, Amanda, you better go back if Brewer finds out that you've been What's here. the matter, Eddie? Are you afraid of Brewer? Of course I'm not afraid, but use your head. He financed my island. I'm going to take his girl away from him. Until I get on my feet here, let's keep everything on the up and up. <laughs> What's so funny? You and Brewer. What about Brewer? <laughs> I was thinking of Brewer keeping everything on the up and up on his side. Look, Eddie, why do you think he set you up on this island? Because he wanted to own a hotel? A resort? What do you mean? It was an investment. <laughs> I'll say it was. Well, if you've got a point, Amanda, get to it. I will, I will. Treasure. That's the point. A million dollars worth of buried treasure. A million? You're crazy. That stuff isn't worth anything. I'm talking about a real treasure. The diamonds and emeralds and the pearls. The treasure Brewer is going to dig up. You mean there's a million dollars worth of stuff buried on this island? Not yet. But there will be after Brewer buries it. That doesn't make sense. Why would he do a thing like that? Oh, it makes sense. Brewer always makes sense. You know what he did? He bought a huge lot of stolen jewelry from an international fence. The pieces were so identifiable and so hot he was able to buy it for a song. But he couldn't get rid of it. Then you came along. Eddie Gillespie with his little island and his buried treasure gimmick. Wait a minute. He, he told you this? I was with him. We were on the yacht not far off the Azores when we made rendezvous with another boat and took the jewels aboard. And now Brewer's in Puerto Rico having the stones taken out of their settings. And when the time comes, he's going to dig them up out of your island in a moldy old sea chest in front of witnesses. Got every angle covered, all legitimate. So what? Aren't you interested? Well, if that's what he wants to do, that's his business. I've got the island and I'll have you. Will you? Amanda, what's the matter with you? What's eating you? A million dollars. I want it, Eddie. If you really want me to break with Brewer, you'll get it. What kind of talk is that? I thought you loved me. I do, Eddie. That's the point. I want us to have the money. But we'll have each other. That's not enough, Eddie. I want that million. I got a good mind that... What, Eddie? Shh, shh, shh. There's someone in the brush. Who's there? Who is it? Good evening. Clive, what are you doing here? You're always sneaking around. You're getting angry again. Get out of here. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was just thinking how much trouble can be caused by a million dollars. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to escape. But first, it's a long time between fun on the weekends. But it's a lot shorter if you find the midweek fun that's here on most of these same CBS stations every Wednesday night. Midweek fun with Groucho Marx, Bing Crosby, and Burns and Allen in one, two, three order. Try listening to them all every Wednesday night. Groucho, Bing, and George and Gracie. And you'll find the week speeding by much more merrily. And now we return you to the second act of... Escape! She went back, and I was left to finish the hotel. But the whole thing had soured for me. All my enthusiasm for the project was gone. But I buried the tourist bait, the pirate treasure. I scattered the pieces of eight, the rusted hinges, all the old relics over the island as per plan. And then I was open for business, and the tourists began to pour in. A change came over Clive. Now he set up his easel down by the dock, and he was gay and gregarious, and I trusted him less and less. He was up to something. And what galled me, the tourists were crazy about him. <laughs> Whatever made you become a beachcomber, Clive? Women, beautiful women like yourself, they drove me to it. Oh, Clive, I don't believe a word you're saying, but it's fun. Where did you get him, Mr. Gillespie? He's priceless. Clive, why... Uh... I came with the island, standard equipment, along with the volcano and the treasure. Is there really treasure on the island? Well, you found a piece of an old saber yesterday, didn't you? Yes, and my husband found a golden sovereign, but I mean real treasure. Chests full of gold. Or... Look for it, Mrs. Chapman. Every cove, every bay. It could be anywhere, on the mountain, in the jungle, 
Legend says that Captain Kidd himself stopped here, loaded with treasure from the Spanish main. He slew all the Caribs, every single one, buried his loot and sailed away. And as legend has it, he never came back. Oh, just think of finding it. Then dig, Mrs. Chapman, dig. Take one of our donkeys and a pick and shovel and go out on the trail. Oh, I will. I'm going again this morning. Mr. Gillespie, I'm simply mad about your island. Thank you. Cynthia, darling. Oh, oh, that's my husband. Oh, here I am, Fred. Come along, dear. I'll see you boys later. Aren't, uh... Aren't you overdoing it? I'm just being helpful. Adding local color. All that stuff about a legend. You didn't talk that way when I first came here. Mm, things are different now. By the way, when is your pirate coming? Pirate? Brewer, I think you called him. It was two days later that Brewer and Amanda arrived. I was on the veranda watching as the seaplane settled on the water. I watched them walk up to the hotel. Oh, yes. Clive was on the dock painting. He watched them, too. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Hi. Good to see you, Eddie. You've done a great job with the hotel. Paradise. That's the name for it, all right. It's the best investment I ever made, Eddie. Well, I even read about your Al in the New York papers. You got a big spread about tourists finding old pieces of eight in an old sea chest. Ah, oh, that was positive inspiration, Eddie. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, wasn't it? What's the matter? Don't you feel well? You look tired. You've been working too hard. Come on up to the room. We'll have a drink. He was so charming and so relaxed, I began to wonder if Amanda had told me the truth. For the next week or so, I watched him all the time. But he was just a guy on vacation having a whale of a good time. Look at him. The life of the party. Come on outside. I want to talk to you. You know, I think you lied to me. I don't think there is any treasure. Don't be a fool. Of course there is. And when is he going to bury it? I don't know. We just have to wait. If I find out that you lied... Eddie, you don't believe I... Maybe you're trying to pull some kind of a double cross on me. Let's go back, Eddie. <laughs> well, this is the hard way to get exercise. I think you sound but beautiful. Well, if you want exercise, why don't you come out and dig with us, Brewer? I will one of these days. Oh, that's what you've been saying all week. Look at my waistline. I've taken off an inch. Why don't you come tomorrow, Mr. Brewer? It's lots of fun. I like to sleep in the morning. Oh, come on. Sure, come on. Be a sport. Okay, I'll dig with you tomorrow morning. Who knows, I might be lucky. Tomorrow <laughs> morning? Eddie, that means he'll have to bury it tonight. Yeah. You'll have to watch him. Don't let him out of your sight. I waited outside until every window was dark, until the hotel was quiet. I waited and waited, but he didn't come. And still I waited until... Still up, Eddie? Clive! You might as well get your sleep. He isn't going to bury the treasure tonight. What do you mean? How do you know? Because he's already buried it. Well, you're crazy. He couldn't have. I've watched him constantly. Apparently not close enough. What about the hour just before dinner when you and the girl were on the other side of the volcano? Where did he bury it? Tell me. In Devil's Cove. At Devil's Cove? Oh, there's no point in your going there now. You don't think I'd leave it there, do you? I dug it up. I know I couldn't trust you. All that talk about getting away from civilization, you know, better than anybody else. Oh, I'm not going to keep the jewels. What would I do with money? Yeah? Then where are they? I buried them again. You what? You ought to thank me. I'm making an honest man out of you, Eddie. You advertise buried treasure on your island? Well, now you have it. Like you said, gotta give the tourists dollar value. Why? <laughs> Just think, tomorrow or the day after, or next month, one of your tourists will dig it up, as advertised. Clive, look, don't do this to me. If you don't want the jewels, just tell me where they are. I'll give you anything, only just tell me. And miss all the fun? Oh, no. <laughs> morning, Eddie. Good morning. Great day, isn't it? You're coming out to the diggings with us? No, uh, no, Brewer, I've got some work to do here. Say, you look tired, Eddie. You work too hard. You ought to take it easy. Have some fun. Relax. Relax. I wondered how relaxed he'd be when all he dug up was dirt. I watched him go off down the trail with the other guests. 
I tried to concentrate on my work. The hotel was quiet. Everyone was at the diggings, but I couldn't think. I was checking supplies in the wine cellar when Amanda came back. You should have been there, Eddie. Oh, you should have seen his face when he found it was gone. Where'd you put it, Eddie? I haven't got it. Of course you have. I told you, I don't have it. What are you trying to do? Double-cross me? Brewer! Paul, I... I'll take care of you later, Amanda. But, Paul, he forced me to tell him... She's lying. All right, Eddie. Where is it? I don't know. Come on, Eddie, talk. I haven't got it, I tell you. Clive took it. Clive, who's that? Clive, the beachcomber. He saw you bury it, he dug it up and buried it again. Nobody saw me bury it except maybe you. Wait a minute, will you? I tell you, it's true. Talk. Where'd you put it? Talk. Talk. It's no use. I haven't got it. You'll tell me the truth if I have to beat you and hurt. Amanda. I had to do it. He killed it. Don't worry, everyone's at the diggings. No one could have heard it. Oh, Eddie, your face. What'll we do with him? Oh, when everyone's asleep, we'll get rid of him. I'm glad I killed him, Eddie. Now it all belongs to us. I haven't got it. You, you mean you were telling the truth about that beachcomber? Yeah, yeah, he moved it. He buried it some other place. Because he wants one of the tourists to find it. It's part of his plan to get even with me. We can't let anyone else find it, Eddie. We've got to do something. Oh, my head. Eddie, listen to me. We've got to get rid of the tourists. Yeah, yeah, good. Got to get rid of them, every one of them. We waited until siesta, when all the guests would be asleep in their rooms. Then we went to the construction shed for the dynamite that was left over from blasting the harbor. We loaded it and Brewer onto a donkey and went up the back trail to the volcano crater. I pushed Brewer into the crater, planted the dynamite inside the top edge. Amanda strung the wire down the slope to a cave on the east side of the island. I went down to the cave. My island was asleep. I had my hand on the plunger. I was ready to throw it, and then I realized fully what I was about to do. With one gesture, I'd be destroying everything I'd worked so hard for. Eddie, what's the matter? I can't do it. Give it to me. No, Amanda, no! No! <laughs> I sat on the side of the mountain and watched the island become alive with frantic, frightened people. They streamed out of the hotel, half-dressed, clutching their belongings. They tripped over one another in their frenzy to get to their boats, terrified of a dead volcano. Our threatened eruption was a complete success. By nightfall, there wasn't a tourist on the island. Even the natives had scurried away in their canoes like so many frightened rats. And there were just the three of us left, Amanda Clive, and me. How will we get the treasure? We can't dig up the whole island. We won't have to. Any man that's got that much loot stashed away will dig it up himself. You can't tell me money doesn't mean anything to him. We'll wait. And we did. We waited and got on each other's nerves. We waited until we couldn't stand it anymore. But Clive didn't make a move to dig it up. It was clear he'd never go near it as long as we were there. Our only escape was to dig. We started in systematically on the east side of the island, then the north, in the rain, in the wind, in the boiling sun. Oh, this was heat. I can't take it anymore, Eddie. I'm tired. I never thought I'd hear you say that. This was all your idea, don't forget. I don't care, Eddie. Why don't you give it up? G get away from here. What? Go and let him have it all now. So that's what you want, is it? It's Clive now, huh? You and Clive. Well, you won't get your treasure that way. I'm staying and I'm going to dig without you. I'm going to dig until I drop. It was hot. It was always hot. My eyes ached from the glare of the sun, but I forced myself to keep going. For days I'd been digging near the old sugar mill. But today I had a feeling I'd be lucky. My pick hit something hard. I dropped to my knees and furiously began to claw the dirt with my hands. But it was only rock, a big rock. I moved it aside and there it was. A pearl, one single pearl framed by the fresh imprint of a sea chest. And then I heard him from a long way off. Clive, and he was laughing at me. He was watching me through those binoculars of his and he was laughing at me. 
And suddenly I knew what his game was. That's why I hadn't found the treasure in all this time, because he'd kept moving it. And he'd left a pearl behind this time to tell me he'd done it. I knew then what I had to do. I had to kill him. I went up the hill by the back trail. And just at the top, I stopped and took a firmer grip on my pick. Clive's back was to me. He was sitting exactly the way he had been the first time I saw him, in a tangle of vines painting through binoculars. I crept up to him. I raised my pick and brought it down with all my strength. <laughs> but it was too late. He'd sensed me and ducked the blow. The pick had ripped through the canvas. In fury, I raised to strike it again on my hands, froze in midair as I stared at the torn canvas. It was a picture of me. And the pick had pierced my chest. Me, holding a pearl in my hand, and the look on the face he'd painted was horrible. The pick slid out of my hands. Here's your pick, Eddie. Take it. You'll need it. Take it, Eddie, and dig. And by the way, I had to kick Amanda out again today. Keep her home, will you? <laughs> That was months ago. How many months? I've lost count. The jungle has claimed the island again, just like he said it would. The damp rot, the hurricanes, the vines. The hotel sags on its timbers and the big front door is gone. The last wind took most of the roof. And there are bougainvillea roots growing up through the cracks in the swimming pool. The jungle has claimed Amanda, too. She's lost interest in everything except Clive, and he won't have her. She doesn't care about the treasure anymore. She won't dig. But not me. The jungle's not going to get me. Nothing is going to stop Eddie Gillespie. Every day I dig. Once in a while I hear him up on top of the hill laughing, and I know he's moved it again. But someday I'll beat him to it. Someday I'll find it. Yeah. Someday. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson. Tonight we have presented Treasure Incorporated by John and Gwen Bagney. Featured in the cast were Frank Lovejoy as Eddie, John Hoyt as Clive... Mary Lansing as Amanda, and Harry Bartell as Brewer. Also heard were Eileen Prince and Paul Fries. Special music was arranged and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week. You are sitting in a cheerless gray cell, staring at the rain through the small barred window above your head, and struggling desperately to keep your sanity. For in 12 hours, you must die or escape. Next week, we escape with James Poe's seething tale of blasphemous terror and violent death, present tense, starring Vincent Price. Goodbye, then, until this same time next week, when once again we offer you Escape. It's no joke when an accident happens to you, and an accident can happen to you. This winter, take time to be careful. Whether you're driving or walking in traffic, be cautious. Cross streets with care. Drive safely. Keep your wits and windshield clear. In traffic, walking or driving, be careful. Be sure to join us at this same time next week when we offer you Escape, starring Vincent Price. And now stay tuned for Pursuit which follows immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>